Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, all the way out. And stay with the breath. It's there all the time. The question is, are you there all the time? Sometimes we meditate and we're there for a few breaths and then we're off someplace else. And even though the breath is still coming in and going out, we're not getting the most use out of it. Today we're commemorating a John Fuang's passing. It's been 37 years now since he passed away. And it's good to think about his teachings. One of his teachings that really hits home was that if you want to know the truth, you have to be true. So we're going to be with the breath. You want to know the breath, you have to be true to the breath. It's showing its truth all the time. In fact, all the dhammas that the Buddha taught are showing their truth all the time. But the reason we don't see them or hear them is that we're not here all the time. We're off someplace else with other agendas, other ideas. One of the stories that a John Fung used to like to tell was of a John Mun. Someone once asked him, how is it that you can practice the Dharma out here alone in the forest? The person who asked him was a senior monk in Bangkok who didn't have much respect for the forest tradition. And he was saying, now here I am living in Bangkok with all these wise people all around. But even then I have times when I've come up with problems in the Dharma that I can't get anybody to answer for me. And what do you do out here in the forest? And John Munn says, I hear the Dharma 24 hours a day, except for when I'm asleep. A leaf falls, a bird calls. There's Dharma in that. The leaf falls shows the truth of impermanence. The birds are calling. Because they're suffering. If they weren't suffering, they wouldn't be calling. So it's all around us. Aging, illness, and death. Things that are inconstant, stressful, not self. They're showing their truth to us all the time, but we're not listening. We're not here to pay attention properly. So we need to develop some appropriate attention. Learn how to listen to the Dharma that's always here. Because as John Fuang said, it's showing its truth all the time. But we're not true. We're not true in our generosity, we're not true in our virtue, we're not true in our meditation. If we were really true in these things, the truth would go deep to the heart. Because the things outside are not the only things that are showing the truths of inconstancy, stress, not self, inside the mind. Your mind is inconstant, it's stressed, stressed out, and so a lot of it is under, not under your control. That's what you've got to straighten out. There was another time when Someone from Singapore wrote to a John Fuhr to talk about his practice, saying, I try to see three, three characteristics in everything. I watch TV, I drive the car, I work. I try to see the three characteristics in everything around me. And John Fuhr told me to write back to him. He said, the problem is not with the things around you, it's the things in your own mind. The, things that are, the mind that's saying, this is inconstant, this is stressful, this is not self. That's the problem. Now the problem is not that it's saying those things, but it itself is, is the problem, because it's inconstant, stressed, stressful, not self. You've got to learn how to go against those three characteristics. You've got to make your mind constant. You've got to make it at ease here as you breathe in and breathe out. You have to learn how to bring it under your control. And that's when you see deeper inside as to what lies beyond both things that are stressful and not stressful, things that are constant and constant, things that are self and not self. There's something even deeper. That's the real truth in there, and it's always true. So if you want to find it, you want to be true as well. This is what, one of the things that makes the Dharma so special. If you're not true, you can't know it's truth. I've heard people say, I tried meditation and it didn't work for me. Well, exactly what did you try? And how sincere were you in trying it? As the Buddha said, if you really want to know the Dharma, you have to commit yourself and reflect. And the commitment is where we have to be true. And the reflection is where we have to be honest with ourselves. So this is a Dharma that can be known only by people who are true and honest. But we can make ourselves true and honest if we're not there yet. Which means that the Dharma is open to us if we make ourselves worthy of it. When you have a strong sense that this is something really important in life, that's one of the best ways of commemorating all that we owe to a John Fuang and to the long line of a John's and other teachers who have kept the Dharma alive ever since the time of the Buddha. The Dharma of the reality is true all the time, but the Dharma of the Buddha could easily disappear. So we want to make sure it doesn't disappear with us, so we can carry on the tradition. Other people may pick it up, they may not pick it up for us, but that's not our concern. Our concern is how true we can be to the Dharma, so we can un 
uncover all the truths that it has for us. Truths that can lie beyond our imagination, but that are really true. <laughs>